Lord, God of heaven, creator of all, Lord, please be merciful. Please hear my voice. ¿Entiendo? Sí. Sí, gracias. ¿Cómo es mi Juanita? ¿Qué? No. ¿Qué do you mean that doctors won't treat her? But you're her auntie. You can come up with something. No. I have nothing on right now. Hi, baby. How are you feeling? I promise. Okay. Dame un besito. Okay, muchos besitos. Lakers and Portland. Lakers lost. I don't know what they're doing losing to a team like Portland. Hey, don't you knock now? No, you know I never knock, man. <laughs> please help my child, please. <laughs> man, your neighbor sure is praying. Please, hear my voice. I've never heard anybody pray like that before. I need to help my child. It's almost touching. It almost makes me want to cry. She started this morning and has been non-stop. Well, who is she? Have you met her before? She's a lady from the building. She's been here about a year and a half. We meet in the hallway sometimes, we talk. She's a nice lady. Well, what does she do besides pray? What does she do besides pray? Yeah. Well, she uh, entertains Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny on Thursday nights for Pinochle, and then I think spends the rest of her time looking for leprechauns at the end of rainbows. So you think God is a fairy tale? Yes, I do. I see absolutely no difference between the two. All right, give me one difference between Moses going up a mountain to talk to a burning bush and Jack climbing up a beanstalk to talk to a magical harp in the sky. For one, Tony, the stories of the Bible have a little more historical value than Mother Goose. I mean, this is a 2,000-year game of telephone we're talking about. I mean, how are we supposed to believe any message that has been so manipulated by power-hungry men? If there really was a God, he would have come down from the clouds by now and stopped all the pointless suffering in the world but he hasn't, because he doesn't exist. Yo, man, I, I don't know anything about all that, but do you mind getting off your soapbox, get me another beer? 
<laughs> Lord, Jesus Christ, I know you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God who heals people, who heals the blind. I beg you, God, Lord. I know, I know your will will be done. But please, I beg you, I beg you to please help my baby. She won't stop. I swear, I feel like... I'm going to talk to her. Here, baby, let me relieve some of your stress. Oh. that God's not going to save her child? Because he doesn't exist. Because if he really was as powerful as everyone made him out to be, why is she suffering in the first place? I have no idea. But I don't understand why you can't even entertain the option. Because he doesn't exist. And he won't help. And if you want me to list a million freaking things that he hasn't come through on, just let me know. I've got time. Tony, when have you ever really given God a chance? Okay, Mr. Know-it-all, how can you call yourself a true atheist when you've never allowed for the possibility of God to exist? All right, let's say God does exist, and he can intervene in my life. So that time when he, on that time when I almost got hit by that bus was a miracle. It was a miracle. If that guy hadn't babe, stepped out. that's what I'm saying. Uh, babe, I'm on your side, okay? God had a plan. Okay, and if you see that, then you start to see the work of God in the world around you. I mean, look at the humanitarian effort going on in, in Africa. There's UNICEF, Red Cross, these doctors who quit their high-paying jobs and, and they go and help poor sick people. He can do beautiful things. Okay, then what's with all the suffering in the first place? If he's the one responsible for all the good stuff, isn't he then the one who's also responsible for all the bad stuff? No. Not really. I mean, a lot of the times that's there to teach us something or because of the choices we've made. So the three-year-old child in Africa who sees his whole family murdered and left for dead is learning something? I mean, I, I can't see what he possibly could have done in his short little life to deserve to have that happen to him. I don't know. It's God's will? 
God's will? Really, Gail? No. No, I, I don't believe that there's a God in this world that wouldn't look out for his most innocent and beautiful creations. No. When I was young, my mom got sick. <laughs> she refused her medical treatment. Said that her God, her Savior, was going to come cure her. And she called out on him so many times. I can remember seeing her pray. Just like that woman over there. And you know what, Gail? Jesus never came to save my mom. She died a week before the doctor said she would. the God of Israel in my life, my God of miracles. I have no more time. Please, God, do something. Please, please hear my prayers. Please. Hey, your neighbor isn't praying tonight. No, she's not going to be praying anymore. Who is it? It's me, Tony, your neighbor. Who? Tony, your neighbor. Buenas noches. Today I come here to give you my testimony about my little girl Juanita. Ours is such a God of wisdom and strength. He, he will lift us if we only call on him. He can touch us in our hidden heart. Yesterday, I was visited by a mighty man who himself was visited by a mightier force. Our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ. Whoa, man. What do you mean? I took care of her. I knew she needed help, so I helped her. For real? You did that? Yeah. Because I exist. Not God, Jesus, or any other imaginary character. I'm here to tell you that God can come to us through anyone or anything. The same way he helped my little baby Juanita. 